Hey, welcome back, family. Welcome back, welcome back. Hopefully you paid attention to the uh, subject or the title of today's video. We're continuing on with Tai Chi Classics, specifically the translation that is um, done by Master Wei Sun Liao, who just happens to be my founder of Temple Style Tai Chi. So he's the founder of the system that I actually study and soul group. He's also the founder of your group as well. So uh, maybe a week or so ago, we began discussing Tai Chi classics. Very important to know the philosophy as well as the movement because the philosophy has a very big impact on the way that the mechanical movements take place as well as the uh, thought processes, everything. So. We're going to continue this. This is part of an ongoing series, and you can go back and look at the first volume. It's in the archive. Oh, but before we get popping off, Sifu. Yeah, I've actually been saying that. Oh, have you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, all right. this is part of an ongoing, ongoing series <laughs> of uh, videos that we have. And uh, before we get going, actually, as Brother Peyton was saying, we'd actually like for you to go right ahead and make sure that you subscribe. Uh, reason being, by subscribing, and not only subscribing, but hitting that thumbs up button, you're going to get a continuous uh, reminder of um, any time that we drop content. You know, there's a notification bell there. Be sure to punch that and give some feedback, family. The feedback helps us in regards to bringing more content and bringing more clarity. So if you have anything that you want to see, don't be shy about it. Anything you want us to talk about, go ahead let us know, family. Reach out to us. Leave a comment. And like I said, be sure to subscribe and hit that uh, like button right away. And you will always get a notification letting, letting you know when we're live. That way you can participate in the exchange as well. You know, it's always fun when you can actually be live and direct with us as well. So let's continue on with Master's teachings. Here we are. This is the second, second part two of a continuous ongoing journey, family. And we're going to keep each one of these gatherings relatively short so that we can digest this information and think about it. We can go back and like I said, you can actually leave some questions for us because I love entertaining questions and helping to bring more clarity. And I'll be honest with you, I'm learning every day and I look forward to learning more. And by getting those questions, you help me think more, family. Thank you very much. Welcome. So I'll begin here on page four. And as I said, this is uh, Master Liao's classical Tai Chi translation. All right. Right here on page four, the first paragraph begins off by saying something that's very important. He says that first we may need to shed our beliefs and our assumptions that we have already inherited. And a lot of us take that for granted. You know, we should Sifu simply says that we should question everything, you know, including our own traditions. So what are your traditions? I don't know your traditions. You know your traditions. So start investigating and find out what's the reason behind you, you know, just finding reasoning, family, observing. Also, he says here that human being, you and I, um, knowing that there are not perfect. So knowing that we're not perfect, despite our perfection and search for a better life. Human beings, knowing that they are not perfect, desire perfection and search for a better life. So we're all searching to become better, right? He says, historically, people have always made mistakes in the search because they have misunderstood nature. That's a very big word for us. Nature, family, and potential of human being, or human life. Yeah, we just, we don't even really know our true potential. Not us, so good. Not us, but general. I'm speaking general terms. 
He goes on further here to say that each generation has interpreted this potential differently. Hmm, that makes sense. That simply makes a whole lot of sense, family. He says, some have made religious assumptions while others have ignored or even denied the value of human life altogether. As various social and organizational hierarchies develop and evolve into traditions, they become traditions. We're not born with tradition. It's something that's been given to us. He says, fundamental mistakes continue to be made. So we pick up these traditions and we continue to make more and more mistakes. He says, these mistakes begin to accumulate and are oftentimes themselves perpetuated as being tradition. <laughs> oh boy, some jewels are here. I always like to go back and read these. So he goes a little step further and says, if we naively follow our own traditions, meaning just following without giving any thought, we may someday find out that we have made yet another mistake. Ain't nobody got time for that. He says the mistake of not questioning our own traditions. So I think we kind of get the overall message of questioning our traditions, at least looking into them, you know, being in being an observer. So step out of our shoes and look into our traditions, maybe from the outside, just looking in, just checking it out. Not saying there's something wrong with it, but just to see, do I really understand? Or does it have the understanding or the meaning that I thought that it had? Hmm. hmm. Go a little further here, family. He says, even though our modern technology, I like technology, it's kicking me in the butt right now. Mm. <laughs> he says, even though our modern technology has brought us into the space age, the motivation of human life still remains to be very mysterious. That's, that's quite true. He says, human achievements seem very small in the light of historical process, progress of the civilization. Does that make sense, family? Or should I read that again? Yeah, I, I need it again. I'll read it again. That's Brother Peyton here. It's me. I do always, right hand side. Always, always. I'll read that again and make sure we get it. He says that human achievements seem very small in the light of the historical process, I keep saying process, historical progress of civilization. So if you think of that, historically, how have we progressed right. and compare that into how humans have actually evolved over time? Yeah, and you know, this actually uh, brings up an interesting thought to me, at least, seemingly insignificant. You know, it's like that 2% that gamble that actually wins. You know, that, that little tiny bit that makes a, a huge impact seems insignificant. Right. And that's even in, like, think about the details inside of the Tai Chi form or the Qigong form. Those little things that are, we know they're really big because we've been practicing. Yeah. But for somebody who's not practicing, they like, oh. The intricacies, the optimization. Right. Of, that's, that's what actually make it work. It's, it's the magic of it all. Right. The tiny things. So I like to say, you know how when people play music, we always, we don't, not us, but what about in between the notes? That's also very important. Mm. You know what I mean? Everybody think about the notes, but what about in between the notes? That's a very important part as well. We call that the transitions in the Tai Chi form. Mm. So what's in between the postures? Mm. There's always a transition. So here we go. I'm going to go over this last paragraph here, and we're going to conclude this one as well. He says, when we watch with pride and enjoyment the flight of a jumbo jet. So think about that, family, looking at a jet flying in the sky. He says, when we watch the, with pride and enjoyment the flight of a jumbo jet shrinking the earth beneath its wings, it is all too easy to forget that its flight 
is an imagination of the verbs. Hmm. Somebody had to start with imagination. He says, merely the use of aerodynamic principles that were thousands of years old before humans first walked the earth. Got to be in tune with nature. He says, our advanced medical technology has rocketed us to the super sophisticated level of organ transplant. Who would have ever thought of that? He said, but we still have to succumb to the most basic and primitive needs. We must breathe air and eat food to survive. I think that's... I won't disagree with it. That's, man, I mean, it gets no real. I know you wouldn't because yeah. you, you know about going without and... Intermittent fasting, 23-hour fasts. That's definitely going without. Yep. That'll yeah. make that'll make you appreciate the next meal and really think about where your food comes from. Mm -hmm. Last paragraph, fam. He says, um, "We, the human inhabitants of this earth, may come to realize that fundamentally we have not progressed very far from the original inhabitants of this planet." You know what, Sifu? I got a I got a great idea. We already did a short for the first part of this chapter. Let's make this one along. I'll go long. I feel like we ain't done yet. I'll go long. Yeah. So back that up, family. Remember he talked about how we've been progressing, you know, generation to generation? He says the human inhabitants of the earth may come to realize that fundamentally, fundamentally, we have not progressed very far from the original inhabitants of this very same earth. Think about that. We got all these technologies, but how far have we really got? Right, right. Have we just preoccupied ourselves from the actual goal? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what happened a lot. Sifu said everybody's busy doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's what he means by that, like being entertained. Mm -hmm. But what is that entertainment doing for you, for your spirit? Mm -hmm. We're not here to be entertained. It's nice sometimes. My entertainment is hanging out with you all. He says, uh, we may come to see that we cannot change very much about ourselves. <laughs> We're still ba very basic, you know what I mean? Reminds me of my perspective I was sharing the other day about how I'm watching my young body be young, but I feel like how ridiculous my body feels, and I'm just watching it, and I'm like, I know everybody else can feel my feelings, and I'm just like, yep, that's me right now. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's true, bro. Check this out. He says, a close look at our at our world's history reveals obvious cycles. So look at the world history, and you'll see that these obvious cycles start to reveal themselves. He says, in which the development of the total person was either emphasized or ignored. Mm. That's that's so think about over time. So we're at we a go state of these, ignorance now with the uh amount of computer games and, right. and TV shows and movies that don't actually help us develop our internal selves wow. or even external selves for that matter. Right. So this book was written back in the day in the same observations were taking place then. So basically he's saying we're either focused on building ourselves up. This is as a generation he's talking about. Mm. It seems like it goes one way or the other and it keeps changing. And right now, it's in the technology age, people are not thinking about building themselves up as much. Yin yang, yin yang. Tai Chi 360 is here, family. Mm. He says, when, I, when idealized human, human nature was emphasized, when idealized human nature was emphasized, this yielded a very strong, creative civilization. Mm -hmm. Because we weren't dependent on technology so much. He says... One in which society progressed and people became spiritualized. We became real humans again. Mm. Instead of being drones or sheep. He says, yet many mistakes still took place during this journey. We're doing it the old way to the best of our ability. Getting in tune with nature. That seems to be the best way to go. Use technology because it is good. But don't let technology deprive us of really living a real life. Right, right. You know what I mean? Because we're not computers. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the way that the world is being crafted out to be right now uh -huh. has a lot to do with shoving you inside of your little box, 
And now you can only find social welcoming feelings, at mm-hmm. least, in your little box. Right, which you, is like a prison, if you think about it. And if you don't got a little box, then, oh, you're not welcome anywhere these days. Mm. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So think about that. So physically, you've been put into a box. Everybody's in their little house. It looks just like a prison, no matter how big it is. It's square. And you've already been conditioned to keep other people out, because everybody's yeah. a threat, right? Ah! Yeah, nothing in nature comes out squared. Hmm. Nature is circles. Hmm. So from an energetic vibe standpoint, the energy is not going to flow inside the square the way, way that it would move inside of a circle. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? The hmm. angles are too sharp. Look how sharp that corner is. No angles, no energy moving in there. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Nature is circular and spiral. So here we go, family. He says several thousand years ago, such idealisms emerged in China. He said the Chinese of this particular period were searching for the highest form of life. We're yeah. talking about this particular period of life. This is what they were looking for, higher form of life of the human body, mind, and spirit. They were looking for that. He didn't say anything about looking for religion. You might get it there, but that's not the only place to get it. And oftentimes you don't get it there either. Right? Mm-hmm. You don't have to go to a certain religion to be a spiritual being. So we're not talking about religion, family. But right. Interesting interesting note there. Right. Um, not necessarily to do with religion, but neurolinguistic programming. Mm-hmm. And that is, from a neurolinguistic programming perspective, you are much better off believing that there is a God and that you are in his or her or its favor. Hmm. If you do not believe in a God, then you couldn't possibly be in its favor. And if that is so, then taking on any alchemical training or even just brain programming, because you, everybody's programming their brain whether they like it or not. That's true. Whether or not you're doing it consciously to yourself by paying attention to the words that you're using is really the bread and butter. And so maybe, you know, I've, I've seen people who don't believe in God call themselves a God. So maybe that's uh, their way around that little uh, an obstacle that I see for those who choose to not believe in something, a greater life force than themselves. Right. I've heard that approach as well. Mm. And some of those people, they believe that um, they believe that they are God, per se. Mm. Um, but they also believe that everybody is. And everybody is a little piece of God. I believe that everybody's a little piece of God for sure. So yeah, but check this out. So yeah, take example. You have a mirror, right? Mm. That mirror, they would say this is just a, an idea okay. that they they set out there so you can kind of see. So the mirror is all life, including God. And they said God wanted to experience Himself. So that mirror is broken into many different pieces. Many different pieces being all of us, right? Humanity or whatever type of life form. They're saying all of these different life forms, plant life, higher levels of animal life, whatever it may be, microbes, viruses, all of that is God experiencing himself from different perspectives. That's what I've been Mm. Yeah, you know, the the closest thing to me that has proven itself to be a great reflection of God is just the arts. Mm. The arts, you know, it's... It's one of the only things that I find truly, it does not matter your race, color, or creed. Oh, I love that. If you are a practitioner of the arts, you love other devoted devotees, more or less. You know, I've devoted my life to the arts. Right. And when you see somebody else who's done the same thing, it's like instantly... You're you're my homie now. You're you're my you're my best friend. You're my guy. Right. That's the brotherhood. Yep. Now with that being said, you don't like only love practitioners. Of course, you love other people as well. But... I love anybody who's interested in the arts, even if you aren't a <laughs> practitioner. Right. You've got the interest, then you've got the potential to be somebody that I will love for a lifetime. Dig it. Yeah. So peep this, man. With all that being said. Basically, our Tai Chi, as we as we practice Tai Chi, we don't practice religion. You know what I'm saying? Mm. No, no specific type of um, doctrine or whatever they may call it. Yeah. What do they call it? 
Yeah, doctrine. Why doctrine, not? Right. Why so, not? Yeah, we don't we don't jive with that. Um, for us, Tai Chi is simply a way of a life. It's a lifestyle, and the key indicator being being connected to nature. You yeah, know? and staying in your own power. Right. Staying in your own power, making sure that you know when when some when something tries to make you feel like you don't have power in a situation. Try to prove it wrong and only accept it when you fail to prove it wrong. And maybe then don't even accept it. That's my advice. Hmm. Sorry for giving it un, un, uh, unasked for. No, that's okay. Yeah. Hmm. You take what you want from anything and leave whatever, you know, what's useful to you or whatever and keep it moving. Hmm. Here it is here. This, uh, hmm. He says, unlike Western civilization. So he's talking about how the Chinese were actually, um, you know, their goal was set on Raising the frequency, raising the vibration of of their civilization. Unlike um, Western civilization, he says, which separates our body, mind, and allow the spirit to develop only in... Oh, wow, right there. So he says, unlike Western civilization, which separated body from mind. So think about these exercises and stuff. People can just do it. You can be listening to music. You can be running, not paying attention to your body at all. Mm. And you can still get a good physical workout. Okay. Right? So he's saying the Chinese, they brought the mind and body together as one practice. And they noticed that the results were phenomenal because you're more in tune with yourself. Mm. So he says, um, unlike Western civilization, which separated body from mind and allowed spiritual development only in terms of religion and mystical ecstasy. I Mm. like that. He said the Chinese conceived the human mind to be an unlimited dimension. That's very important. Mm. I should repeat that, you said? Yeah, I think so. I will, because that's super important. He says the Chinese conceived the human mind to be an unlimited, unlimited dimension. But the scope of the human activity to be moderate. Hmm. That makes sense. Hmm. That makes sense. So a lot of people, family, myself included, I was one for a very long time. Whenever I thought about the human body or what the human being was, it's mostly thinking about the 3D, the flesh, but never thought that it was more than that. And that's basically what he's getting at right here. The mind has unlimited potential. All is mental. He also says the focus of their goal was a unified philosophy of human life and a simplification of beliefs. So this Tai Chi sign here is very simple. Very, very simple. When you look at it. Very simple. And this is what they wanted to do. They wanted to make things simple and not complex. And that's not so easy, family. It's not so easy. He said the focus of their goal was a unified philosophy of human life and a simplification of beliefs. This was the birth of what we know today as Tai Chi thought. Tai Chi became the invisible power that guided the movements of Chinese history for thousands of years. So, family, this philosophy, Tai Chi, it was a governor, a governing law or way of life for thousands of years. The yin yang principle. It, it ruled the whole country for thousands of years. So this is nothing new. And by the way, it was very successful at doing just what it was meant to do. He goes on to say it gave tremendous impetus to that fabulous culture. They had a very fabulous culture. He says, showing its influence in areas ranging from medicine to diet, from art to economics. So this principle can be applied to everything. It's already there. We're doing all of those things. Yeah, it's already there, whether whether people choose to um, use it with a conscious effort or not. You know, that's how you get the best out of it because it's already being done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like you said, we're using it all day here. Of our bike deliveries that we got planned for that for that homestead piece. Right. 
Mm-hmm. He says, um, wow. He's blowing my mind every time he goes. He says, even the order of human relations was designed according to Tai Chi ideals. So society itself was based upon the Tai Chi principle. This is a good thing we're doing, my brother. Good thing we're doing. Try arguing with that. Hey, family. That's a lot to digest. That is a lot to digest, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stop you earlier, but I just couldn't. That's a lot couldn't bring to digest. To stop you. So that concludes part two. Now, family, if you have a question, leave a comment. Don't go away without getting your answer to your question, family. That's why we're here, so that we can bring more clarity according to our own our own perception, family, our own experience. That's all we can offer. And also, um, if you guys would, please give us some feedback on what you what you like the most about this? You know, do you, do you like hearing Sifu elaborate? Do you like our little discussions that we have? Because if if we hear that you guys like our little discussions, maybe we'll take a topic piece here that somebody brings up and elaborate on it with Good Brother Ollie. Oh, that'd maybe, be a good idea. Yeah, right. Bring some more people in on this and get some more perspectives and why yeah, like why we all think the things that we do. That'd be a good idea. Yeah, do that, family. Hey, Sam. Drop us a comment. Mm. Thank you for being here, family. Tai Chi 360, we out. Peace. Details are always good. Oh, nice. Always good. Sam says.